Hello and welcome to Leroy Gaming, where today we continue our class deep dive for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, and today we will be looking at the Slayer class as well as all of their uh, subclasses. And I want to throw out a special thanks to Sam Ash who requested the Slayer to be covered next. So this is why we are uh, covering this class today. Now, if you are new to my videos, my uh, deep dive videos, they are quite extensive. So for your convenience and to keep, help you keep your sanity, um, I do timestamps uh, in the description below, and you're going to see it also translate to the chapters on the progress bar. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Again, if you like this content, uh, help out my little channel. Uh, likes, subscriptions, greatly appreciated. You know all the gist. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right on in and take a look at the base class, which is Slayer. Skilled, <clears throat> skilled at tracking down targets, Slayers are consummate hunters, living for the chase and the deadly stroke that brings it to a close. Slayers spend most of their time honing their weapon skills, studying the habits and anatomy of foes, and practicing combat maneuvers. So, let's take a look what this class is all about at its core. Um, so, uh, as I begin this, I do want to point out, um, as I start with the base Slayer core class, I'm going to go over everything in extreme detail. When we look at the subclasses, when there are repetitive elements, I'm probably just going to say a quick word, uh, reference this part of the guide, uh, and do the in-depth look at any of the changes. Um, to keep it a little bit more succinct. But let's not kid ourselves, this video is not gonna be succinct. Uh, even with that being said, let's start uh, looking at the features. All right, Slayer proficiencies. Slayer's proficient with all simple and martial weapons. Those light armor, medium armor, shields, except tower shields. Um, at level one, you're gonna get the feature called study target. A Slayer can study an opponent. He can see as a move action. Slayer then gains plus one bonus uh, on weapon attacks and damage rolls against it. The DCs of Slayer class abilities against that opponent increase by one. Now if a Slayer deals sneak attack damage to the target, he studies the target, allowing him to apply a studied target bonus against the target, including the normal weapon damage roll. And then you're gonna see progression at 5th, 10th, 15th, and all the way to 20th level, the bonus on weapon attack rolls, damage rolls, and two Slayer DCs uh, difficulty checks against studied target increase by one. So you're going to get two, three, four, eventually plus five to all those. At 7th level, uh, a Slayer can study an opponent as a move or a swift action. That's great because you can study and then start attacking. Eventually, you can move, study, and then attack. All right. Um, so that's exactly what this is pointing out. There's the swift and the normal progression. All right. Next, you're going to gain, starting at level 2, Slayer Talents. So as a Slayer gains experience, he learns a number of talents that aid him and found his foes. Starting at second level, and every two levels thereafter, Slayer gains one Slayer Talent. Unless other no uh, otherwise noted, Slayer cannot select an individual talent more than once. Now, it's important Slayers can take Rogue Talents as Slayer Talents, counting his Slayer level as a Rogue level. Also, after second level, the Slayer can select a Ranger Combat style, such as Archery or Two Weapon Combat, and gain a Combat Feat from the first feat list of that style. He can choose feats... Uh, from his selected combat style, even if he does not have the normal prerequisites. After 6th level, he may select this talent again and add the 6th level ranger combat feats from his chosen style to the, to the list. And then after 10th level, he may select this talent again and add the 10th level ranger combat feats from his chosen style to the list. So, a lot of flexibility with the Slayer talents. Slayer slash rogue slash ranger um, because as you can see here and as we will see 
this class combines elements of all three of those classes. Now, speaking of rogues, you're going to get sneak attack. So, if a character can catch an opponent when he is unable to defend himself effectively from her attack, she can strike a vital spot for extra damage. The character's attack deals extra damage any time her target would be denied a dexterity bonus to AC armor class, whether the target actually has the dexterity bonus or not, or when a character flanks her target. More often than not, the flanking is method is the easiest way to get this, but if you can knock down, stun, or incapacitate in other ways um, an enemy, you get this bonus easily as well, but really flanking is kind of the go-to way to get this most of the time. Uh, the extra damage is 1d6 and increases by 1d6 at later levels. It's precision damage. So if you're not familiar with precision damage, it is not multiplied multiplied on a crit. So it will always just be 1d6 per uh, tier that you have unlocked. And the character must be able to see the target well enough to pick out the vital spot and me must be able to reach such a spot, meaning such spot needs to exist in the first place. So against goo or things that don't have basically vital organs, this is going to do nothing. Um, and the progression here is you're going to end up getting 6d6 total. So you get 1d6 at 3, another one at 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. So max that at 6d6. Um, for comparison, a normal rogue maxes out at 10d6. So you lose 4 ranks compared to... <clears throat> now, uh, at 13th level, you're going to get Slayer's Advance. Slayer can once per day... Increases movement speed by 30 feet, and his movement doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. And then 17th level, it occurs uh, twice. Now, this does not mention how long this lasts, but just the fact that you can do this quick movement, maybe just for a round. Uh, but even if that, it lets you get, get out of dodge or really get up on somebody uh, very quickly. Uh, if you're trying to get to your target that you've uh, basically studied, you can ignore other uh, enemies you need to go through so that you don't uh, rock the attacks of opportunity. Now, you also, uh, this kind of mentions, this was part of the description, but in case you're wondering, this, these are the advanced talents that you can choose. Uh, well, actually it didn't reference it, I thought it did. Uh, so at 10th level, you can choose one of the advanced rogue talents in place of a rogue talent. So 10th and above, to recap, you can do your base rogue talents, your base slayer talents, your advanced rogue talents or your ranger talents as described previously now um then uh at level 14 you get query a character can as a standard action denote one target within his line of sight as his query receives a plus two insight bonus on attack rolls made against his query and all critical threats are autom automatically confirmed character can have no more than one query at a time so this is pretty much implying you can have it up at all times uh, but you just have to basically swap it so you combine this nice little bonus with uh, you know studying a target and you can get some pretty insane to hit bonuses and then 19th you get improved query uh, the character's ability to hunt is improved and now select the query as a free action that is a huge difference because a 19 you can um, basically query and then uh, as a swift action study then you can move up to the enemy uh, and then you can attack and not only is it a free action but the attack bonus is plus four and again it's an insight bonus it's gonna stack with a lot of the other bonuses out there and then at 20 you get master slayer the slayer becomes a master at capturing or killing a study target as a standard action he can make a single attack against the study target at his full attack bonus now remember, at level 20, that means you're basically giving up numerous attacks. Maybe three, maybe four, depending on haste. Could be more. Um, if the attack succeeds, the target takes damage normally and must succeed at a fortitude saving throw. The DC for the save is 10 plus one half the Slayer's level, plus the Slayer's intelligence modifier. Whether or not the target succeeds, it cannot be targeted by the ability again by any Slayer for 24 hours. Uh, interesting. So, big thing here. I, I, I 
I think I misread this in my head for a second, but definitely they're going to die if they don't save this. So you're basically playing kind of like a tactical game. Do you think you can kill him with this one hit? So if this is somebody that's got a low fortitude stat, like a wizard, some, a caster, or somebody like that, you can do this. Otherwise, at level 20, you might have, like we said, three, four, five attacks. You might do more to be able to kill them within those five attacks, potentially. So this is... Now you kind of calculate. Obviously, if something's big and buff and looks like it's got a ton of fortitude uh, saving uh, modifiers, this is not going to be so great if they fail this and then you just one hat attack. So that right there is the base layer. Now, let's look at the subclasses. First one is Arcane Enforcer. Some um, slayers study the arcane knowledge, learn new efficient ways of hunting the target. They are known as Arcane Enforcers. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a quick look at this because I believe there's going to be some extra features here. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, Arcane Exploits. That's what it is. So I'm going to quickly select some stuff so we can give you a quick preview of this. I just selected completely random. No background. Nice confusion. Okay. And these are the Arcanist um, Exploits. I'm going to mouse over this for now I'm going to um, do a separate video to go over all of these as they impact you know arcanists and it also uh, impacts slayers but I'm gonna mouse over them really quick for you right here so we got uh, yep go okay, so if you want to in time pause do that there are a lot of them. Again, um, I will work on getting that video, guys, uh, as soon as I can. And these ones that are grayed out are the more advanced ones. Where you're going to need specific prerequisites like uh, having some of the earlier ones. Or uh, specific, uh, basically, you have to be an angel or an azada. So I'm assuming that's a mythical path. Okay, um, so that's that. Um, as a quick note, I'm just going to select one now. And then we will go ahead and go back to subclass. So, uh, let's take a look at those specific features um, for the Arcana Enforcer. So, you're going to start with the normal Slayer proficiencies. You're going to get uh, your study target uh, feature as well. Um, and so, both those two elements are the same as the base slayer class so make sure you check out uh that portion of the slayer base class of this video if you want the full read throughs on it um and then the new features for this we start out with arcane reservoir so an arcanist or in this case slayer has an innate pool of magical energy that uh, she can draw upon to fuel her arcanist exploits and enhance her spells the arcanist Arcane Reservoirs can hold a maximum amount of magical energy equal to 3 plus an Arcanist level. Each day when preparing spells, Arcanist Arcane Reservoir fills with raw magical energy, gaining a number of points equal to 3 plus 1 half per Arcanist level. Any points she had from the previous day are lost. She can also regain these points through the, uh, the Consume Spells class feature and some Arcanist exploits. The Arcane Reservoir never hold more points than the max amount noted above. Points gained excess of the total are lost. Points from the Arcanist Reservoir are used to fuel many of the Arcanist's powers. In addition, the Arcanist or Slayer can expand one point from Arcanist Reservoir as a free action whenever she casts an Arcanist spell. If she does, she can choose to increase the caster level by one or increase the spells DC by one. She can expend no more than one point from her reservoir on a given spell in a day. All right, so that is the reservoir feature and it's gonna fuel um, some of the other functions here. So we got the Arcanist exploits. So by, and this is what I kind of uh, did a quick look through a moment ago, and I'll have that again, um, that full video on that coming shortly. So by bending and sometimes even breaking the rules of magic, Arcanist learns to exploit gaps and exceptions in the laws of magic. Some of these exploits allow her to break down various forms of magic, adding their essence to her Arcanist Reservoir. At first level and every two levels thereafter, the Arcanist learns a new Arcane exploit. 
Arcanist exploit cannot be selected more than once. Once an Arcanist exploit has been selected, it cannot be changed. Most Arcanist exploits require their Arcanist to expend points from her Arcane Reservoir to function. Unless otherwise noted, saving throw, DC for an Arcanist exploit is equal to plus or 10 plus one half to Arcanist level or Slayer's level in this case, plus the Slayer's Charisma modifier. So this build, uh, you're going to need some Charisma in it, it looks like, on top of uh, your other stats. So it's going to be kind of needy. Uh, and again, here shows the, the progression. So you're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 exploits as you level up, maxing out at level 19. Now you're also going to get Slayer Talents, okay? And this is going to be, as we see, the base Slayer um, class. And it's, uh, as a reminder, you can also choose Rogue Talents uh, for this. And starting with, technically unlocks the 10th level, but you'll get access to it at 12th level because you are losing some of these uh, as a sacrifice. Um, choose to pick Advanced Rogue Talents. So you have Advanced Rogue Talents, Regular Rogue Talents, and the Slayer Talent. You do get your sneak attack the damage and you get all of it. So you get all six D6 uh, equivalent by the time you're level uh, 18. Uh, you get great access to greater exploits. So at 11th level, every two levels thereafter, the Slayer can choose one of the greater exploits in place of the Arcanist exploits. So those are the ones uh, you, you saw kind of grayed out uh, when I was mousing over the list. And then at... Uh, at 20th level, you get the Master Slayer as in the base class. So again, if you want the full uh, lowdown on that, make sure you check out the timestamp for the base Slayer class. So right there, you have your technically part Arcanist, part Slayer, part Rogue, um, and plus part Ranger class. So very, very hybrid -y healing. All right, next, let's go ahead and take a look at the Deliverer. The UPS class, um, also known as a Divine Assassin, God's Blade, or Wrathbringer. A Deliverer is a weapon chosen by a god to punish those who have committed an affront to the deity. Evil deities are more likely to use assassins than deliverers, but some good deities use deliverers to deal with problems of a subtler nature than a cleric, inquisitor, paladin, or war priest can typically handle. Alright, let's take a look at this magic. So you have normal pr Slayer proficiencies. You're also going to get your normal study target progression. So again, reference the part of the video for the base Slayer class for details. You're also going to get your normal sle sneak attack damage progression. So again, you're going to get, by level 18, a total of 66 sneak attack damage. In addition, you still get your Slayer talents. And also your uh, option to use Rogue talents as well as access to advanced rogue talents starting at level 10, again, as the base class. You will also receive the Slayer's Advance. It does not change at 13th, and it gets buffed at level 17. Furthermore, you're going to get Quarry, which is the same, and Improved Quarry at level 19, and Master Slayer at level 20. So, what's the difference, do you say? Well, basically... These two elements right here, um, you're going to get a deity selection, okay? Um, and if you want to know about deities, check out my in-depth deity and domain uh, video where I go over every single one of these deities on this list, tell you everything it gives you access to, to the domains and favorite weapons. And in that video, I also go over uh, all the domains um, that individuals um, that are related to them. So it's a really in-depth video, uh, lots of timestamps, and you will definitely find it helpful uh, when referring to this deliverer. And then to go along with that, at level two, you get determined zeal. So at second level, a deliverer shrugs off attempts by his mortal op op opposite to control or kill him. On any round in which a deliverer attacks an opponent whose alignment is at least two steps away from his, such as lawful good deliverers fighting a chaotic good or lawful evil foe, or a neutral foe with no other alignment components, 
he gains a plus two bonus on will saving throws against that opponent's abilities as well as the benefits of the die hard feat until the end of his turn and uh the ability replaces that slayer talent you normally get level a second level so it's really hard to assassinate him or slay him uh, and uh, and so forth so basically that's the biggest difference um the big game changer, obviously, is getting access to a deity. So, um, let me pick any one of those, uh, and it's going to, uh, you know, get some benefits here. Now, you should check, in, guys. What's interesting is this is going to give you access to the favored weapon, um, but what I'm not seeing you don't get domains you don't not get any magical capabilities so it's part flavor and you do get that favored weapon element but what we are not seeing here uh so unless it's missing the feature and i don't think it is unfortunately uh you know you don't get to uh be magical uh as far as casting spells but again it's part of the theme it's part of the uh the, the way to class uh, place. All right, uh, so let us go on and take a look at the next subclass, which is the Executioner. So these professional killers are trained and used almost exclusively by crime families, streetwise and ruthless. Uh, they, operate, they operate independently, often making their talents available to the highest bidder. The few unscrupulous executioners exploit this arrangement force families to pay higher rates for their services. Most of these assassins follow a strict personal code and, and, and maintain absolute transparency with their employers. So, very in line with the uh, executioner line of work. Alright, so let's take a look what we have here. So, commonalities of the base slayer are going to have the slayer proficiencies as normal. You're going to have your study target progression as normal, it looks like. You still have your Slayer talents and related access to Ranger and Rogue talents, including the access to advanced Rogue talents at the 10th level. Um, you also get your sneak attack damage all the way up to 66 by level 18. Uh, also similar to the base class, Slayer's Advanced at 13th, and Slayer's, uh, the improved uh, basically Slayer's Advanced at 17th, um, and the Master Slayer feature at 20th level so for all of those check info on all of those in my full read through check the part of this video at the beginning talking about the base layer class so you may ask well Leroy what's different well let's take a look first you get focus killer a level one so at first level executioner study target bonus and the DCs of the saving throws against his slayer abilities increase by one against humanoid opponents but decrease by one against non-humanoid targets. So, human slayer, basically, what we're looking at here. Uh, keep in mind, in in this game, in uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, doing a lot of demons, etc., supernatural creatures, those uh, are not humanoid targets. So, you could, basically, this could be worse than a base class in a lot of situations. Keep that in mind. You also get a level 4 painful strike. Fourth level executioner automatically gains this talent. Creature that takes sneak attack damage from an executioner must make a successful fortitude save. DC is 10 plus half the executioner's uh, class level, plus his intelligence uh, modifier, or become sickened for 1d4 rounds. And then the other feature is assassinate at level 10. So, at 10th level, an executioner can target uh, can target studied opponents and attempt to instantly kill them. The ability can only be used out of combat, and the target must not see the executioner. Apart from that effect, are they similar to the coup de gras ability, which is pretty big. Um, now you gotta sneak up and play a little independently, uh, or have a whole group that's really sneaky. But if you can pull this off, uh, at least that very first target you're going to go after in a combat, uh, potentially uh, just insta-dead. Now, 
14th level, whenever an executioner kills an enemy with assassinate, all other enemies in a 30 foot radius become demoralized. And at 19th level, whenever an enemy survives an assassinate attempt by an executioner, it suffers 2d6 bleed damage. So if you fail, you're still doing some damage. Again, because it's at 19th level, this is really consolation prize. May be a little generous. It's 2d6. Um, a level 19th, not that much, but it is something. So that is, again, uh, mainly a small thematic change. Not really giving up almost anything, uh, but you're getting some benefits. The only problem, remember, is the focus killer technically could be a debuff. Uh, and that debuff, actually. All right. Next, Spawn Slayer. Generations of warriors hold the line against impossible odds. Some of their ancient techniques persist to this day. So... What do we got here? We have normal Slayer proficiencies. Uh, looks like normal study target progression. Um, we have Slayer talents, and it looks like we have the full range of them here. Not giving anything up. Uh, and as normal, at 10th level, you're also going to be able to choose the advanced rogue talents as an option. So um, you're also going to get the full sneak attack scaling all the way up to c66 at 18. Um, you get the slayer's advance a level 13 and 17 as well uh, you get the improved version again all of these are the same as the base class so if you want to uh, out have me go over these in depth uh, just check that timestamp for the base uh, slayer class as I will read through all of those uh, now moving on um, you actually have at least one more feature here that's going to be a similar uh, as the base class. So you got Query at 14, Improved Query at 19, which really, again, works stacks really well with the studied feature. And also get Master Slayer at level 20. Again, that's all very similar. Now, there are some changes here. You're going to get, starting at level 5, Studied Spawn Large. So... A spawn slayer specializes in fighting against large single targets. At 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th levels, bonus on weapon attack rolls and damage rolls as also the DCs of slayer abilities against study target. Um, so, at 10th level, if the target is huge or later, the bonus is increased by an additional 2. Uh, so, 1 at the 5th level, sorry, uh, for the large targets or a larger at 10th level. If they're huge or large, uh, larger, it's two. At 15th level, if the target is gargantuan or larger, bonus is uh, increased by an additional three. At 20th level, if the target is colossal in size, the bonus increases by an additional four. So plus four to hit extra, plus four damage, plus four DC. So um, at 20th level, when everything maxes out, you could basically get plus 19, oh, sorry, plus nine to hit, Plus 9 to damage, plus 9 to DC. As you're getting the plus 1 here as you naturally go up. So, against those targets, really, really good. Um, and this is a uh, level 7, you get giant leverage. Spawn Slayer learns techniques to counteract the foe's size advantage. When performing a combat maneuver against a studied target of large or larger, Spawn Slayer gets a bonus to the Check equal to the creature size modifier to the CMD, the combat maneuver, um, maneuver uh, bonus. So plus one for large, plus two to huge, plus four to eight a gargantuan, and plus eight to colossal. The spawn slayer adds the same bonus to a CMD, so combat maneuver defense, when defending against combat maneuvers from large or larger study targets. So they'll actually have a chance uh, to do things like trip, uh, is larger creatures so that's pretty pretty unique and nice and here what I'm mousing over is basically just it notating uh, that it's colossal gargantuan going backwards huge and large so again very thematic if you're, you're gonna be focusing on killing a bunch of baddies that are big this is good again depending on the ratio you know, how many actual large or larger creatures you run into the game may have more you may get more or less mileage out of it but nevertheless pretty darn cool all right penultimate option the subclasses are stygian slayer 
Stygian Slayer crawls out of the darkest shadows, strike fear into the hearts of civilized folk. He's a merciless killer who control a sliver of magic, allowing him to arrive unseen, commit murder, and depart without detection. So, let's take a look what we have here. So what's interesting, I think this has got to be a typo, yeah, so for this one, because this is the beta branch, there are some things missing. Now, the, this should tell you basically the, um, the Slayer proficiencies. Um, I'll show you real quick, baseline. <clears throat> um, it should be um, being proficient in simple martial weapons as well as light armor, medium armor, and shield. Uh, I believe so. Uh, it seems odd that I wouldn't have it. Um, there's also a feature here, so I don't know if this is what it meant to be uh, to the left, but it's empty. So maybe, yeah, these two elements right here, uh, for whatever reason, it is not showing uh, them. So do take over a grain of salt that this class, subclass, is not going to be accurately portrayed here. Um, what it is showing is the remnants of the base class. So it shows your studied markers, um, normal natural progression, Slayer uh, talents, sneak attack features, Slayer advanced features, the query and improved query feature, and Master Slayer. Uh, so this most definitely looks like it still needs to be added uh, in a future um, a version of this and obviously by the time it goes live so apologies that this specific subclass currently um, is not available to provide you information and i'm double checking here make sure it definitely doesn't look like it's been um, implemented so sorry about that guys um, now let's go ahead and take a look at the final option which is vanguard this one does look like it's implemented luckily so a stygian sorry uh, vanguards are battlefield commanders who focus on the brutality of combat and lead their allies to bloody victory. Quick to react to danger, a vanguard is a valuable scout, capable officer, and skilled tactician. So, let's look at the similarities and differences. Uh, Similarity-wise, you still get normal slayer proficiencies. You get normal studied um, target progression here. You're able to do it quicker, obviously. So, this does not change. Still get access to sneak attack damage, which is going to be 66. Um, these are going to be new. We'll take a look at those in a second. But continuing on similarities, you're going to get your Slayer talents. You're not going to get as many of them. You're going to sacrifice a couple here early on, it looks like. Um, you will get some. You're also going to get the Slayer's Advance at 13th. And Slayer's the Improved Slayer's Advance at 17th. You're going to get Query as normal at... Um, 14th and this does not change from base class same of improved query and um, master slayer again all like the base class and advanced talent as the base class so for all of those features that we looked at so far if you want a full-on read through check the timestamp and go to the slayer base class uh, overview now let's look at the differences because there are a couple differences going to start by getting Vanguard Tacticianer, uh, tact tac Tactician at level 2. So at second level, a Vanguard receives a teamwork feat as a bonus feat. You must be at all the prerequisites. Now once per day, it's interaction. Vanguard can grant one of his teammates feats, a teammate feats to all allies um, within 30 feet who can see or hear him. Allies re uh, retain that use of the bonus feat for 3 rounds plus 1 round for every 2 levels the Vanguard possess. Possesses. Allies do not need to meet the prerequisites. Whenever Vanguard is able to select a new Slayer talent, he can instead choose to gain additional use per day of this ability. So that's big. Replaces your level 2 talent. You're going to be able to um, basically have the option of using it more and more, or of course, add more Slayer talents as well. Um, you are also going to get uh, teamwork feat at second level. Uh, so this is the, and it references it here, but it kind of shows you the writing on it. This allows you to pick that um, um, that teamwork feat. Uh, next, you're going to get a level four uh, Vanguard bond 
Fourth level, Vanguard forms a bond with his fighting companions. As a move action, he can choose one of his current studied targets and grant half of the studied bonus target bonus against that target to all allies. This bonus lasts for a number of rounds equal to the Slayer's Intelligence modifier, minimum one. So you sacrifice your level four Slayer talent here. So this is why you lose your level two and level four Slayer talents. And then finally, um, he gets Uncanny Dodge. Notice no other Slayer gets Uncanny Dodge. So the character can react to Ginger before he can sense, uh, before her senses would normally allow her to do so. She cannot be caught flat-footed, nor does she lose her dexterity bonus to AC if the attacker is invisible. She still loses her dexterity bonus to AC if immobilized. So a character with this ability can still lose dexterity bonus to AC if an opponent successfully uses the feint action against her. Um, so um, and obvious, and then if another, if you multi-class. If another class gives you uncanny dodge as well, it would bump this up to the um, improved uncanny dodge. All right, um, so that is the Vanguard. Uh, so more team-focused Slayer, uh, and that brings all the subclasses of the Slayer to a close. Uh, hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, look for that reference video uh, the, the related to the Arcane Enforcer coming soon. Uh, if you enjoy this content, want to see more, uh, like, subscribe. I love uh, all the interaction I'm having you guys in the comments. Uh, throughout those questions, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Or, in, as in some cases we've seen, uh, some of our other viewers have answered them in phenomenal ways as well. Again, this is Leroy, Leroy Gaming, and I'm going to see you guys next time.